conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, before I get started, obviously, I need to talk to you about briefly about the work we're doing and the fundraiser we're trying to do because I am getting lectured <laughs> by uh, people who are very supportive of my work and work with me or for me to get a lot of what we do in the community from our research center to our think tank through our program development and program uh, uh, program implementation uh, there's a lot of people who really believe in what I do and they are pushing and they understand the need to expand and reach and do the things we need to do. We, they understand the magnitude of the force of what we have in front of them. And, and I get lectured on my pride a lot. I get lectured on the fact that I don't like to ask for help and how much it hurts to ask for help. So here I am. Look, if you don't know who I am, this is probably not the place to start. You need to look into the work I've done. You need to check out the books I've written, 25 full length books, thousands of articles on the entire spectrum of uh, the black experience in this country. I've written some stuff on the diaspora as well, but primarily the unique experience of slaves and the descendants of slaves here in this country and the psychological and soci sociological implications and how it's playing out in our modern lives. But I also offer the solutions. I've also created the programs. I'm also heavily involved daily in helping people heal, helping people grow, advocating for students in schools, advocating for women who are abused and, and domestic violence and wrongful uh, prosecution and so many other things that I'm consistently engaged in. We need your support. We need to, yes, click the like button, kick the, uh, definitely subscribe because I come every day with my heart and I give you everything I've got and I give it to you authentically. I give it to you genuinely. I'm not here to be a sensationalist. I'm not here to start drama. I'm not here to pick fights with other people to get a position or a place. I'm here because I love my people. I'm here because my people are not nearly where they are supposed to be. I see a lot of the reasons I put 35 years into this. I've been going since I, before I was an adult. So probably a little more than 35 because I've been an adult for over 35. I'm 55 years old. Uh, and I've been doing this thing since my 16th, 17, since I was 16 and 17, when I came across Francis Chris Wilson on Phil Donahue. I immediately took on a whole new mindset. Yes, I've had some levels of, I had to grow up like everybody else. So yeah, I got into things and I wanted to prove who I was and I wanted to get out there and I wanted to live my life. And at a certain point I realized I wasn't fulfilling anything internally and something was still hurting in me. And I had a talk with somebody I really trusted. They said, you're not in your purpose. You can't buy that. 
You can't buy fulfillment. You can't go out there and fill your closet and your driveway and all that stuff and get what you're looking for. What you're looking for comes from being in your purpose and touching lives. And I've been doing that ever since. Ever since I've been doing that. Uh, I've been loving on my people. I've been loving people in general. I've been really trying to reach. So yes, we need your support. We need you to, to, to go beyond clicking the like button, go beyond, um, hitting, uh, subscribe and, and say, look, I want to get behind you. If you want to send an email and join in and become a part of it, we need you. Uh, we also need people who are hurting to be able to reach out to us. Um, we will figure it out. But what we don't want is people out there with no place to go. Trust me, that is an empty, hollow and scary place to be feeling nobody cares that you don't have someone to turn to. We don't ever want that to be the case. We have mental health uh, wraparound services. We have services to train people and prepare them for jobs and get them ready for interviews. We've got so much that we're offering. And this year we're going off into housing uh, domestic abuse victims, housing people who are struggling with addiction, housing people who are struggling with mental health issues. Uh, we are not going to stop. So again, we are asking you to look in the description box, click the link and donate. Uh, also, if you, you, if you're not with, you don't want to click the link and you want to do it by way of cash app, the organization has a cash app account and the cash app handle is in the description box. What we're challenging you to do is give, um, you know, let's start out small. Let's say, let's raise a thousand dollars today. Let's raise a thousand dollars. The goal is to get to $15,000 for the month of January. That's a fraction of what it costs to make this thing go the way it needs to go. Uh, I'm not going to get off into how we've done it for years. People who know, know how we've done it for years. Um, and I love my people, so it is what it is. Now, let me get off into this conversation. First and foremost, uh, my prayers and my heart is still lifted with the family of Damar uh, Hamlin uh, to the people who were on that field, the people who were in that stadium, the people who watched it on TV. That hit hard. That hit hit. That hit heavier than anything that I've ever seen happen. On, and I, I watched nine one. I watched nine eleven, and that was like, but something was different, and I can't explain it completely. You know, I'm pretty sure if I sat down and put my pen to it and put my experience to it, I could write something out. But just sitting and said, hey. Sometimes the moment is just the moment. Sometimes the moment takes you beyond all the BS and it makes you really see life and it makes you understand things differently. It gives you a new perspective. A new perspective was created Monday night on the life of a 24 year old man living out his dreams. And so my prayers are extended. However you see God, you, you need to be in contact with God and send love, light, prayers, power, energy, and everything else you can towards he and his family as he fights for his life. Um, I've done a whole bunch of research then on exactly how that happened. And it's literally an injury-driven cardiac arrest. Crazy, but it, it, it happens. And it actually happens in soccer uh, a lot more commonly than it has happened in football, obviously. Uh, but it happens in car accidents. So I'm like, whoa, really? Um, uh, and my thing goes out, but the thing is, what it did is it forced us to get out of ourselves. It forced us to get out of the tread off the treadmill for a minute and say, hold up. All this stuff that I'm fighting for, all this stuff that I'm trying to get, all this stuff I'm trying to acquire, that's something more precious than that. The breath I breathe, the life I hold, it, it, it means something because if that stops, none of this stuff matters anymore. And that to me is extremely precious. And I hope a bunch of people get this because eventually the reality of it is, is the vast majority are gonna go back to the way things were, life as usual. And my hope is that enough of us see the writing on the wall and say, I wanna be more than just a participant in life, the way it moves. I wanna be a catalyst for change. I wanna be someone whose life moved the world toward a better direction. And I think 
in his short life to this point. And I'm believing and standing and speaking total healing. Uh, he's, uh, he's already done that. Uh, he was doing this before he ever became a pro. He was doing this when he was at Penn, uh, Pittsburgh. Or was it Penn State? He was, he was doing it then. And um, I look at it and he was in the midst of doing a toy drive. And since that, that incident happened, uh, that the, 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 it's gone up from a little over a million to 5.5 million of people donating to that toy drive. And in, 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 in people are moved. People are moved. People are taken out of their biases. People are taken out of their, 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 their egocentric uh, positioning where they only see what's going on with them and they're starting to see a little picture that's bigger. And it's and, and, and while it's centered and resting on Damar Hamlin, it's bigger than that. It's noticing everybody else because everybody that was there was impacted. And so my challenge to my people is let's 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 not take the brevity of life and take life for granted. Let's not ignore that we only have a certain amount of time in this place, on this planet, to do something special. Let's make this this point in time that place. And I'm just gonna give a little bit of time to this because I put it in the title and, 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 and I need to address it, but I don't wanna make it about this nut, but I need to address this. I really think that Skip Baylor signed uh, his resignation letter when he sent that uh, tweet. And I've seen people trying to defend it and trying to rationalize it and trying to say, well, this is what he really meant. The thing is, everybody else has been able to be extremely sensitive to what's going on. Everybody, if you watch them, they're all measuring their words because they understand once those words go off, they can't be be withdrawn and people are taking them in. and so they're not even giving any space for misinterpretation not skip skip threw it out there and then came back and said that's not what i meant and then wants it to go away and then i watched a clip from t today's show where shannon was trying to push it up to push it aside and skip again just the idea that somebody's mentioning that he did it feels like he's gonna come and he's gonna and then he you know he doubles down i'm not taking it down because that I, I, I stand on what I, sometimes it's not about being right. It's about being right. Now, you, you might not get that. Sometimes it's not about you standing on your square and saying I'm right. Sometimes it's about doing the thing that's right for the moment. And that might be taking it down, saying I'm sorry, and just taking it down. Maybe you bring it up later. Maybe you don't. But right now, everybody's mind is still, and minds and hearts are still on this young man. And you're trying to defend something that was in at the very minimum insensitive. And I think it spells the end of Undisputed. I'm pretty sure Shannon is gonna land somewhere and do something remarkable. But I I, I and, and and I want I want to be very clear here. You know, obviously I cape and go hard for my people because I'm black first. Always gonna be. I'm never gonna put anything in front of that. But I care about humanity as a whole. I believe that there has to be that because there's no room for hatred. Hatred is poisonous. But you got to be willing to defend, even if you're not hating. You got to be willing to defend with your life, if you're not hating. But 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 I care. But here's the thing. One of the things I'm real careful about is wishing something on a man, being a man, and knowing the importance of a man to be able to provide, a man to be able to. To, to support a man to be able to create a living for himself and his family. I'm very careful about wishing stuff on people where they lose their way of earning money. But sometimes people in such situations and places, they shouldn't be. Sometimes they're setting a standard of behavior. They're reinforcing something that we don't need to be engaging. And sometimes that needs to be an humbling. Uh, you know, I'm again, I'm not about destroy. The worst to me, the worst thing you can do to a man is take away his ability to provide. It's to take away his ability and means to earn a living. 
So I'm real careful about that. But at the same time, I can't stand by none of the bull crap that this guy has been doing, uh, especially over the last year or two, and definitely what he's been doing over the last couple of months, how he handled Shannon, um, and, and, and the disrespect uh, and disregard in that level, and then the insensitivity that was shown in that tweet. Again, I'm not here to argue what he meant. I'm here to say that wasn't the moment to make that statement. And then there was a moment to retract it and simply say, I'm sorry. Not because even if you meant something different than what people are taking, this is not the time to, go, to wage that war. You've got to know when it's time to sit up and say, okay, I'm going to let the long term character of who I am speak for me. It's only when you have been consistently doing something that people consider suspect that you feel like you've got to defend this one thing that's happened because it's truly not one thing. It is constant and you've been getting away with it. Well, Skip, your days are numbered. Hope you land on your feet. Hope you really take the time to actually think about it. But again, you're not my real true responsibility my people are but i'm seeing you and because you're impacting and my people are around you and being impacted because a lot of people watch that show it's entertaining but i'm real careful about my gates right now so much going on i'm real careful about my gates but back to uh damar hamlin and his family back to the people who have been immensely impacted by this. I've heard the word and seen the word prayer more in the last two and a half days. Well, the last two days, it haven't been two days yet, last day and a half, I've seen the word prayer and heard the word prayer more than I've heard it probably in two years. I mean, total. It, everybody is in that space. Everybody's out there. Uh, big shout out to Dan Orlovsky. I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, ESPN analyst who was bold enough and brave enough to actually go beyond saying our hearts and prayers are with you. He stopped and prayed. And this isn't about promoting any particular one religion. This is about saying there's something bigger than protecting my career. There's something bigger than, you know, what he said right then is my relationship with God is bigger than all this. And so I'm going to go to God. And I'm going to pray for this young man. Instead of saying my hearts and prayers, I'm, I'm going to actually stop and pray. It wasn't any elaborate, uh, eloquent prayer. It was heart. What he had on him at the time, the best he had in that emotional moment, he gave it. And I think something came out with me uh, uh, yesterday morning when I came out and I talked about this and so many other things and the fact that I'm on... Uh, basically a mental health break partially i'm still doing stuff obviously uh but i've cleared my entire calendar i'm not working with any clients throughout the remainder of this week uh i'm trying to get myself together because i've gone literally 10 straight years with something on the calendar every week even on vacation weeks there's something on the calendar and i needed to step back and 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 and, and i just allowed myself to be me and a, a brother came on and he said he thanked me for finally being vulnerable, finally uh, allowing myself to be. And, 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 and it put me in a place. And I think that we really need to be dealing with that as men in our community. The mental health is far too much going on. And so I'm going to be doubling down on what we can do to aid in mental health because suicide rates are on an on a, on a incline in our community, in a number of different age groups and gender groups. Uh, but keep your head up. Uh, keep this man's family lifted. Keep keep the people who are going through things that we don't even know about. You know, uh, I was talking to somebody I consider to be a close friend um, this morning about, you know, some of the things that I've been feeling. And, and, and I just happened to mention this interview that David Mann did and uh, on Tamla, uh, on the Tamla uh, Hall show a, a couple of years ago. And he said, I felt like he was talking about depression. And he said, I felt like I was drowning and nobody saw me. Nobody saw me drowning. And he said, 
And the worst part was I felt like the only way people would see me is after I completely drowned. It hit me when I first saw it, but when I watched it the other day, it knocked me to the floor. Everybody expects you to be the strong person. Everybody expects you to have all the answer. You're not allowed to have moments. You're not allowed to be hurt, frustrated, depressed. That That's taboo. So you put on your face and you say, I got it. How you doing, bro? I'm good. But deep down inside, you're not. We got to learn it's okay not to be good. We've got to learn it's okay to let people know we're not good. It's got to be okay to say, you know what? I don't care what happens. I've got to step back for a minute. you got to be able to do that. So this is a little bit off, but I'm trying to get you to see that this is a time to really look at life differently. So, again, much love to uh, DeMar Hamlin and his family. Uh, this stuff with Skip Bayless is going to pan out. Much respect to Dan Olofsky uh, for standing up and being bold enough to do what a lot of people are going to criticize later because that's just how the world is. Um, also, finally, as I stated at the beginning of this video, as you have seen over and over again, we are trying to do something special in our community. And so once again, I'm going to challenge you to donate. Today, the challenge is $1,000. We're trying to do $15,000 for the month. But the day is the challenge is $1,000. This is my challenge to you. Click the like button, yes. Subscribe, absolutely. Give today. This is my call out to you. If you followed me, if you've seen the work I'm doing, if you've seen uh, in 15 of the 2,300 plus videos that are on this channel alone, and I got more than one, or if you've read 10 of the almost 1,000 articles I have on the Odyssey Project site, or one of the 25 books I've written, or talk to 10 of the people that I've directly aided and helped on any given week or month. Show some love, show some support. Let's keep this going, let's expand this, let's create this national network so that we touch lives across uh, the country. We need to face who we are and where we're at and what we need to do. We need to stop pretending we're there. We need to stop pretending we've arrived. We need to face the facts that we're in a very detrimental situation. Um, and it's up to us to do something about it. That's my challenge to you. And I'm going to be back again, but I'm challenging you. Let's do something different. So I expect your support. Look in the description box. You can click the link or you can give via, via, via Cash App. Uh, but I am challenging. Let's make it happen. Let's reach that goal. Let's, I mean, that would be fire to me. Just the idea that people actually responded at that level. Uh, I'm challenging. I know we just came off Christmas. I know we, 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 we got so many things going on. But I promise you, the importance of reaching people who didn't have Christmas. The importance of reaching people who thought about leaving us on Christmas, the importance of creating and reaching those people, that cannot be overstated. So I'm challenging you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.